We're on the uh, middle portion of the Nodwasaga River and we're enjoying some uh, rainbow trout fishing or also called steelheading by some uh, where you're chasing large bright silvery rainbow trout that have moved in from Georgian Bay to start their upriver spawning migration. My name is Jesse Wright. I'm a seasonal fishing guide on the Nodwasaga River been a fishing guide for 18 years. This is such a unique fishery because you can fish it all year round. And uh, due to the catch and release zone, it's open for fishing and, and in places that other places are closed, people will still be accessing this fishery and using it 12 months a year. <laughs> this is the day we have our Georgian Triangle Language Association Salmon Slam. You could be looking at anywhere from 50 to 100 people at fishing. Probably millions of dollars in boats here today for this tournament and you know tens of thousands of dollars being spent just today so it's huge economic impact to the local area. It's millions of dollars every year that, uh, that, that comes into this harbour with people on boats. We have launch fees to take the boats out. They rent hotel rooms, they purchase stuff, plus their lures. Fishing is one of those very interesting uh, activities that you always need more gear. You need the flies if you're a fly fisher, you need, the, you need your waders, you need your boat. Uh, all of those things, there's always that little thing that you have to get, plus like lunch and things to do afterwards. So there's all these ancillary um, expenditures that take place from this uh, very fun activity that a lot of people want to take part in. My name is Gary Christie. I'm the director of the Nottawasaga Steelheaders. Uh, we're an organization of anglers and conservation-minded people that um, do a lot of good things for the watershed, uh, which is important for the summer salmon the slam that you see here. 30 to 40 percent of the salmon that are caught in Lake Huron in Georgian Bay come from the Nottawasaga River. At this point, we're looking at a section of the Nottawasaga River in the Niagara Scarp that's already functioning very, very close to its historical pre-development potential. Water quality is excellent. Phosphorus levels are moderate, oxygen levels are very high. So high oxygen levels that are required by brook trout, brown trout, rainbow trout, and also young Chinook salmon. Oxygen is available in abundance to support uh, the, the young fish of these different species. We also have an abundance of gravelly and rocky habitat that provides excellent spawning habitat for cold water trout and salmon as well. And this is the type of water quality situation and high quality habitat that we're trying to extend and recreate further downstream. And of course on this site we have a lot of cedar trees and even the old cedar logs for the dead trees are in the water where they provide terrific attachment points for aquatic insects. So having a stream that has live trees for shade and has old growth logs and woody material in the stream for habitat is a really key combination. The Upper Nodwasaga and one of its other branches, the Pine River, are the really key big drivers for young salmon that support sport fisheries throughout the southern Georgian Bay region. So when you have um, a, a recreational activity that provides millions of dollars for your economy, the most important thing one can do is to keep the thing upon which that is balanced safe and healthy. So those hatchlings in Agila and Mono and Tosserantio Townships and Mulmer even, and all the way down the entire 150 kilometers of Nottawasaga River, 
all those things have to be in place in order for that great day to happen. And so it's really important that, that, the, that the river be healthy, not just because healthy rivers are good, but also because healthy rivers provide money and uh, provide economic activity in places like Collingwood, 150 kilometers away from where this little baby fish came from. One of the key things we're looking at for river restoration is uh, fixing bank erosion, essentially. This site we're looking at right now provides an excellent example of what happens when the vegetation is pretty impacted. And as you can see, the roots that these grasses throw down only extend several inches into the soil. So this whole area from here to here is basically just loose dirt that's very easily eroded by the speed of the moving water. So as soon as this goes into the water, you can see that there's dirt and sediment recruiting in the water and this dirt contains a lot of phosphorus that's full of nutrients so it provides algae growth. The dirt can go into like clean gravel and plug up the pores and make this sort of rocky material less suitable as spawning habitat for trout and salmon. This is a site where we've actually had the opportunity to do a channel realignment. So we've chosen a new path for the river to go, and this meant we could rebuild this section behind me kind of from scratch. Riffles are also really important fish habitat. Behind me there's some spawning salmon, and the salmon choose to lay their eggs here because the rocks are the right size for them to nestle their eggs right in between, and the cool, clean, oxygenated water can really roll over the eggs in those nests. So what we've done with our restoration efforts is we've changed the elevation of the bank. We've graded it with a large earth moving machine or excavator in a way that we can create low roots and introduce new vegetation where the roots extend right down below the river to lock up the soils and protect it. So the Ontario Trillium Foundation helped fund this project. So the funds that we receive help the Navasaga Valley Conservation Authority solicit matching funds through other sources such as TACLA, such as, uh, you know, Cabela's Bass Pro Shop. Having partnerships works. So uh, the farmer, Kent Breeden, has very uh, progressively worked with us and he's been able to obtain grants from the Conservation Authority and other sources for a very large uh, farm fence installation project. So in the background you can see where about 900 meters of fence have been installed on both sides of the river. It's called page wire fence that's designed to exclude the livestock from the, the watercourse itself and keep them within their pasture block. At this site the bank has been flattened out and terraced and the large 20 ton excavator we use has brought in natural sod and grasses and replaced them on the stream to create a stable bench environment. It hasn't really been an inconvenience to me to do this. You know, it's improved fish habitat. It's better for the cattle. They're not in the river. You know, it's going to cool the river down. It's, it's a win all the way around for, for everything. I think it's, uh, I don't see why anybody wouldn't do it. You know, it's, a, it's just a great project. You know what, it's uh, really important that people get out, volunteer, help plant trees, help educate people about uh, the importance of, of our environment. So it's very important to understand the uh, significance of the restoration program we're doing. That's the chief one right now. It's very critical to this fishery. So without uh, programs like the Nottawasaga River Restoration Program, you know, God knows what we're going to see in the future. Our goal is to restore 10 kilometers of the Nottawasaga River. You can help by donating towards the costs of equipment, materials and staffing, or by volunteering to work with us on our volunteer workday. Let's do this together so that our children and grandchildren can experience this amazing sport fishery.